Argo AI CEO, Brian Selesky, thank you for speaking to Bloomberg. You've got a new LiDAR system that you've unveiled. Why does that technology give Argo an edge in autonomous driving? So Argo LiDAR is something we're announcing today. It's a, uh, the longest range sensor that's really on the market that's tailor made for fully autonomous driving. Um, that's driving that doesn't require uh, any supervision by a human. Um, it, it really offers really photorealistic uh, imagery all around the car. Um, it can see at lengths up to uh, and beyond 400 meters. Um, it's a really, really compelling sensor, and it's going to allow us to operate safely on uh, all types of roads. Is this a technology just for your future autonomous cars, or is it a technology that you'd consider packaging and selling to others? Well, we might sell it someday, uh, and we certainly are going to look at selling it in a bunch of verticals that are adjacent to automotive. But for us, we think it's a real competitive advantage for our autonomous vehicle. And so, you know, we'll be looking at those opportunities seriously. Um, but right now, you know, we, we think it's a huge competitive advantage for us. You test in a lot of U.S. cities and jurisdictions, but you've also expanded your operations to Germany. Tell me about that. Yeah, so we're testing in six cities in the U.S. today. We think we have the largest uh, AV test footprint out of uh, any of the other autonomous vehicle companies. Um, and then we're also expanding to uh, Europe. So with our Volkswagen investment, uh, we have an engineering office in Munich, and we're going to uh, start scaling out some operations across some cities in Europe in the coming years. We also just invested in a uh, sizable test track uh, at the Munich airport, uh, which is something we're really excited about. Do you think that you deploy commercially in the United States first or in Europe first? You know, we think that the U.S. will probably lead. Uh, the regulatory environment is set up uh, in a number of states to uh, allow commercial deployment of autonomous vehicles, um, but we also think that you know, Europe is a great market and, and we're definitely interested in um, seeing how that develops. Are you seeing any meaningful progress in Europe on the regulation side? You know, we do. And we think that, that uh, we think that cities really are understanding the benefits that autonomous vehicles provide, whether it be to better manage uh, congestion, uh, do smarter route planning throughout a city to, to alleviate congestion, the safety benefits, the ease and access and uh, democratization of mobility, personal mobility to people who don't have it today. There's a ton of benefits, Ed, and I think uh, I think the cities are waking up to that. You talked about the big names that have invested in Argo AI, Volkswagen and Ford. It's a capital intensive exercise bringing autonomous vehicles to market. What are your financing plans? What are your views on going public? Yeah, so we'll be raising money this summer. Uh, we're really excited about doing that. We'll be taking money from some of the uh, capital markets. Um, and, and we'll be looking at, uh, you know, an IPO in the, in the future as well. Um, I, think, uh, I think that, that it's one of those things where, you know, we, we don't know the exact source that we're going to take the funding from next. We're looking at a bunch of options, um, but uh, we're really excited about how that's going to uh, keep us going for the future to really be able to scale out autonomous vehicles. What about SPACs? There's been a lot of energy around SPACs recently, particularly with a focus on the automotive and aut aut automotive technology sectors. Is that an option for you? Could be. Uh, you know, I think SPACs are interesting. Uh, there's a lot of different takes on it. I mean, it's not a new instrument by any stretch, right? Uh, but it, it really is democratizing um, uh, early stage investment to an everyday investor. Um, and I think SPACs are a really useful route. Uh, that a lot of companies can take in order to take advantage of the public markets and the capital available there. Um, and it, it's certainly allowing uh, an investor access to really transformative companies um, like hopefully Argo someday um, and others where uh, it, those means may not have been available in the past. I think the key though is that uh, with a SPAC, you know, it is important that folks are, are upfront about you know, realistic projections when they go out and when they um, when they speak to the market. I think it's important those investors also understand what they're getting into. Talk to me about your relationships with Ford and Volkswagen. Is your success dependent on them? Are they reliant on you for their autonomous futures? What is the dynamic between the three of you? Well, you know, we're, we're all dependent on one another. I mean, that's what a partnership is, right? Uh, they, they have they are two among two of the largest uh, global automakers. Um, and, and they're certainly reliant on us to deliver the autonomous vehicle technology, just like we're reliant on them developing a number of vehicles that are fit for all sorts of purposes, ride hailing, as well as goods movement. Um, and you know, the partnership was set up from the start where we work very, very closely with each other. We align on the business opportunities. We create the right purpose-built vehicles to meet the customer needs um, and deploy them in markets around the world. Uh, that, that's how the partnership was set up from the get-go. 
We've talked about the United States. We've talked about Europe. What about Asia? Does Argo AI have any ambitions for, for markets in Asia? Are there any potential partners or even customers there? Well, this is the real early stages of, of rolling out autonomous vehicles. You know, we don't rule out any market. Uh, Asia is certainly a huge opportunity for everyone. Um, uh, right now, we're focused on the U.S., we're focused on Europe, uh, and we'll see what the future holds. Can we zero in on regulation? What, what's needed here in the United States? Is it a federal blanket rule for the deployment of, of AVs commercially, or is it should it be by state by state? Well, we're really looking forward to a unified framework of legislation for autonomous vehicles, uh, hopefully sometime this year. Uh, there has been some movement, and we're we're optimistic that that will get passed in this Congress. Um, the 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 important part is, you know, an autonomous vehicle really shouldn't be operating according to different rules as it crosses state, county, city lines. Um, this is something that just doesn't make sense. Uh, that unified framework will clarify the rules and make sure that the playing field is clear, so that so that the technology can progress as rapidly as possible. Now, I say all that also acknowledging, though, that cities have real needs. And we need to also, as we deploy city by city, we also need to be listening to what their needs and wants are. Where is transportation not working so well? Where is public transportation not available where we could possibly complement um, what's already operating in the city? We, have to, we also have to make sure we're doing the right thing uh, for, for our customers. Um, but we're really looking forward to hopefully that unified federal framework. That's the foundation. That's the starting point that we need to get to. There seems to be a real focus on San Francisco, the Bay Area. You have names like Cruise, Waymo, Zooks, all testing here. Argo AI has a Palo Alto office. Um, but which city in the United States do you think is the lead candidate for sort of mass deployment of, of AVs? Is there, are there any surprise cities that one might not think about when we talk about self-driving cars? Well, I don't know if there are any surprise cities, but uh, our first city that we went to as a company actually was Miami, Florida. Um, and, and we're real excited about Miami. We think that the community is really excited about new technology and embracing new ideas. Um, there's a number of transportation needs that are unmet there today that we think we can help with long-term. Um, and you know, really, I think what you'll see are modest deployments of autonomous vehicles over the next few years that are in primarily good weather cities and then eventually they'll start to move northward um, and and what we'll see is uh, what we'll see is that I think where the regulatory environment from a state perspective is is positive for autonomous vehicles those will go first so you've kind of set out a, a kind of timeline there for how AVs might progress the big question that everyone wants to know, Brian, when will Argo AI be meaningfully revenue generating? When will you have a real commercial business? Yeah, we've generated revenue this year, actually, through some pilot engagements that uh, haven't been announced yet. We will be uh, revenue generating over the next couple of years. And, um, you know, I think the thing that's important for customers and, and businesses alike to understand is that these deployments take time. The scale out will not be immediate or instant. This is very much a street by street, city by city type of thing. The testing needs are, 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 are huge. It's really important that we, that we understand the city, understand the needs and wants, and make sure that we really test and validate the product in a realistic setting in the cities that we're operating in before we do full deployments. So this, the scale out is something that's going to happen over time and it isn't going to be instant.